Yeah. Hello, lovely people. This is about section B, A, C, writing. Uh, and obviously, this is gonna, um, we're going to go through uh, all the VCAR exams from 2016 up until 2021. So if you haven't uh, written any of those yet or you feel like um, you're still going to practice writing some more, uh, either stop the video or uh, if, if you want to go through this video and sort of learn some tricks about section B, A, C writing, by all means do that. Um, but then do seek out some of the uh, non-VCAR exams exam paper so you can have a go at um, some that I haven't spoiled the secret, the trick behind. Um, so basically what we're going to talk about is each section B inevitably has some sort of trick to it. Um, and so if you picture the examiners as these, this is an actual photo of uh, the people that set the English language exam. And in fact, all of the exams, bio, cam, all of them, um, they're created by these devious people who are trying to catch out um, students who haven't studied hard enough. Um, which is not true, of course, um, but more realistically, this is uh, this is the kind of person on the right-hand side who perhaps puts together an English language exam, finds really good, juicy things, maybe teaches English language as well. It's kind of like someone who's a bit leery, uh, and they're really interested in finding really interesting and unique uh, versions of language, really interesting texts with really interesting differences to the standard, uh, whereas, you know, uh, on the left, that might be uh, someone else, or someone teaching some other subject, perhaps. So with that in mind, what you're looking for, in essence, is you're going to go to each of the exams, um, and you're either going to think of it as the question being, what is, uh, what is the trick here? Are they trying to catch me out? What is the thing that I'm most missing? Or, uh, more realistically, you're thinking, how is this text different to... Uh, the standard form of that. So, for example, if it's a radio interview, you might want to think, okay, well, what, what are radio interviews normally like? And how might this text be a little bit different to that standard form? So, keeping that in mind, I'm going to try and give you some spoilers. Uh, this one we don't have in front of us. Uh, but the trick here was that it was from the money section uh, and it was uh, sort of instructional. Like, you know, here's how to save money, save money so you can go traveling. But because it was in the newspaper, it was a mixture of quite serious and quite formal, you know, things like down payments, uh, you know, uh, inflation, quite elevated Lexus, as we like to say, unlike my car, which is a lowered Lexus, as we all know very well on my uh, teacher salary. So elevated Lexus plus trying to be a bit silly, trying to be a bit flippant. Um, so that's kind of the trick there. Um, again, not really a trick, but it is the unique feature of that text. So we talk about salient features a lot, which is a very formal way of saying the interesting bits. And so that's the most interesting bit. And if you reflect on all of the uh, all of the texts that we've done as uh, as SACs, as accessible content, um, same sort of thing. Uh, there was something a, a bit funny or a bit strange about them. So. Uh, might have been a highly prepared speech with some sort of off-the-cuff remarks, or it might have been um, a politician speaking sort of quickly to a camera off offside uh, from sort of the main procession. So this one, House of the Week, it has two purposes. So it's, uh, you know, buy this house. Uh, obviously, that's the main thing it's trying to do. But the second thing it's trying to do is sort of be a bit funny, be a bit cheesy, be a bit kind of out there um, as a means to get people to come and look at the property. So rather than a typical real estate ad, ad that just tells you everything you need to ever possibly know about um, houses, apartments, whatever, um, this one sort of took a more circuitous route and sort of talked about around it and made sort of silly asides and it was kind of like a love letter to the house, which was quite strange. So again, whether you want to frame that as a trick or like, um, or just something that's really interesting and a really exciting thing to look at, something really compelling about the language um, is up to you. Um, but either way, as long as you remember that you're looking for salient features, that's really important. So this one, very serious speech, you know, it's all about, uh, you know, you're becoming Australians, you're becoming citizens. Um, but there are two very distinct points where the... Uh, the, uh, what was it, Governor General? Yep, Excellency Governor, uh, Excellency General, the Honourable Peter Cosgrove. So there are two points where he's going through the very serious speech, the very prepared, very cohesive, very coherent, all those sort of things. Uh, lots of pauses, very serious, but there are two points where he goes off script. And then you see a whole bunch of non-fluency features. You see things that really jump off the page. And so the traditional approach is you probably want to go register social purpose and then 
coherence and cohesion, or in this case you would, even though it's a spoken text, or context. Um, and then you want to add in the, the salient features and how they might disagree with something else. So obviously the register of this text is highly formal, but down the end you're going to have to chuck in a paragraph or two about uh, the two places that he goes off script and other things that kind of don't necessarily fit the highly formal nature of the speech. So again, keeping in mind, do you think of that as uh, you know the examiners or the people that set the exam trying to trick you, or do you think of it as uh, you know us us kooky linguist types trying to find really interesting text for you? It's really up to you how you want to interpret that yourself. So this one is a radio ad. Uh, the whole point of a radio ad, especially an Australian radio ad, is, you know, everyone's so cash and we're all mates and we're just talking off the top of their head, you know, just like you might get at a pub sort of thing. But of course, how this differs from something that might happen in a pub or in a casual social situation is that these are trained professionals uh, who probably had some sort of pre-planning, uh, a structure. There's probably a producer, maybe a manager, maybe they have an earpiece for someone saying, you know, bring it back on track or all those sort of things. Um, so it is put forward as something really casual and relaxed but of course there are going to be elements of uh, structure of you know coherence maybe cohesion the way they stick together like they're gonna they're gonna talk within a certain length of a segment they're gonna keep it you know on theme and on topic and they're probably going to tell you you know the phone line and throw to a song at some point as well so all of those things you know you get a pretty clear picture of just how uh, just how they're both can be both things at once so prepared organized but also highly informal and highly casual as i got my cat over here to one side so 2020 obviously i didn't have the right tab open then it's embarrassing uh 2020 work safe ad so obviously it's an it's a job ad so they want you to apply for the job of course that's frankly the purpose of a job ad uh, but they're also sort of selling uh, the company, the work, the, you know, the important role that they have in society as well. So that's two purposes. Um, and often what you'll see is there might be two, two purposes or two functions, and they might even clash at, at points. So if you, we think of, uh, the one that was, uh, not, not available here, but obviously in your packs, it, it will, it will be. Um, they're trying to sell the house, but they're also trying to be entertaining and funny. So often they're not mentioning features of the house because they're taking up a lot of their space trying to be funny. And so in the same way, uh, this might not have as much detail as your typical job ad because they're very much trying to promote the work of WorkSafe and how important and how key it is to Australia and work safety and work sites and OH&S is very important and all those sort of things. So again, often they can actually work against one another. All right, so similar thing. So this one, I actually cannot remember it off the top of my head, um, but you're looking at kind of formal versus informal as the trick here. But hey, my brain has gone flat and I do not have the ideas right on the tip of my tongue. But again, this might actually be a very good example because I haven't spoiled it because I don't remember. So keep that in mind. You want to be thinking, are they trying to trick me? What are the salient features? And of course, remember the structure is register, social purpose, cohesion and coherence, context, or sometimes, you know, all of those. And then think of what are the most salient features? What kind of makes this text different to the other texts that you might expect for this type? So obviously this one, for example, television show, uh, half hour interview, you would expect that you know they would be promoting the amazing feats of one another but of course this text being in an english language exam is going to be a little bit different or it's going to have some unique interesting features so that you've got something to talk about something to write about something to explore so hope all of that has helped and keep that in mind